Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to our King of Kings. Amen. He is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And we are so excited about him. Amen. Because Amen. he is so excited about us. So listen, I'm not going to tarry. I'm Faith Powell, your host of Planting the Heavens in the Earth. Our yes planter today is Prophetess Christy. Tell me how to say it. Shepherd. Shepherd. Shad. Okay. All right. All right. And I'm going to yeah. get out the way because she's got a word and we're believing God for what he's saying. And let me say this right quick, because I could hear this before we, before we came on. I could hear the spirit saying, receive this word, receive it, receive it by faith. Don't try to register it to say, well, I don't feel anything. Don't bring this down into sensation. Yeah. This word is from the Lord. And so we believe the word of the Lord whether we yeah. feel anything or not, but we're going to feel something changes yeah. on us. But I'm not talking about sensationalism. Sometimes yeah. we walk away from our miracle, mm. and undermine our faith because mm. our natural registers didn't give us agreement. Come yes. on, we gotta walk in the spirit. We got to live in the spirit. So let me yes. get out of the way, give her the platform and let her just run with thus saith the Lord. Thank you, prophetess, for joining us today. I'm, I'm just excited. Uh -huh. Thank you for having me. In fact, you emailed me two or three weeks ago when you emailed me. <laughs> I want to make sure I had it all together. <laughs> Listen, out the way. Go forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, well, thank you for having me today. And I'm excited about this word. And and uh, and that goes right along with this morning uh, uh, what the Lord was just telling me. And he was telling me to press, you know, to press. Sometimes we have to press in to uh, hear God, to receive from God. And we have to press in not only that, but to birth what God has for us. Amen. We have to birth what God has for us. But it's an honor to be here today. And and I give God praise and I just encourage all those that are watching this morning that you give God some praise right now. It's okay to, to praise the Lord. It's okay to clap. It's okay to raise your hands. It's okay to shout. <laughs> Amen. Because that is a type of honoring God. And first and foremost, we want to honor God here today because he is so faithful to us. Amen. He is so faithful to us. And so, uh, Father, I thank you today for being faithful. I thank you even right now, God, that I hear the winds blowing today, God. And we thank you that your winds are blowing because winds represent change. We thank you for the rain today, God, in the spiritual and the natural, God. We thank you for all that you're doing today. Every ear that is listening, God, that is watching this, Father God, that their ears are open to hear what the Spirit is saying today, Father. Ooh, and I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your presence in mighty name of Jesus, in mighty name of Jesus. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Faye Powell for having me today so much. I love you so much, dear lady. And, you know, sometimes we have we have our own uh, thought on how God wants to do something, amen. And I was just going to jump right into what God, you know, laid on my heart, and I'm going to get into that. But I was telling uh, Dr. Faye this morning, I said, you know, that uh, we have to press into God. And this morning, as soon as I woke up, without even getting out of bed, I heard God say, press, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that are going on in the world right now. There's a lot of stuff that is happening right now. And sometimes uh, we can be distracted by that or get unfocused uh, or get disheartened or whatever. And sometimes we're just, we get to a point to where we're like, well, what's the use, you know? And uh, I heard the Lord say, press. And so I want to tell somebody today, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. 
but press and keep pressing and keep pushing because, and this is the key, and this is what I'm going to talk about today, because your worship, your worship is causing you that, that pressing in to worship, that pressing in to worship, to that pushing into worship, pressing in, making time for God. You, you, are, you are striving to make time for God and that pressing into making time for God and worshiping God is gonna cause you to birth the, the very next thing that God has for you, but is causing you to birth the glory of God. Amen. It is causing you to birth the glory of God because we are, we carry the presence of God and we are glory carriers. But the Bible says in Isaiah 61 and 2, it talks about, it says, arise and shine for the glory, the light has come and the glory of the Lord is upon us. So, and it says, behold, that darkness and, uh, shall cover the earth and deep darkness, the people, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. So here is the question. Here is what God has been speaking to me. He's been talking to me about glory, but he's been talking to me about a glory global shakening a glory global shakening. And so we carry the glory in us, amen, and we carry the presence of God in our life. And you, and this is the question is how it, we are to be planting heavenly things into the earth, amen? And we are supposed to be uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Well, there is glory taking place, come on, in heaven. And so we might ask ourselves, well, how on earth are we supposed to get glory? How is glory going to enter into earth's atmosphere? Oh, my Lord. And cause a shakening and awakening to take place. Well, here's the key. The key is worship. Oh, and I know y'all are saying worship. We hear about worship, worship. We hear about it, but not on the level that I'm going to teach you today about worship. Haggai 2 and 9 says that the glory of this latter shall be greater than the former. So there is an increase of God's glory that is being released, one, upon your life and upon the earth. But it's going to come through you pressing and through you pushing and through your worship. Amen. In John uh, 4, uh, 23 and 24, it says the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So now, somebody say now, is the time for true worshipers to arise. And God is looking for true worshipers. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. God is looking for true worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm. That means that you are going to have to, one, be true to God, and you're going to have to be true to yourself. Amen? You are going to have to be true to yourself and to God. What do I mean by that? True, true to God, true to yourselves. In other words, uh, 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 let me just break it down for you like this. Uh, a few years back, when God began to call me, uh, into uh, 
destiny, we'll put it like that, into his purpose, into him, in deeper to him, deep calling to deep. But uh, the Lord instructed me to go on a, a fast, a seven day fast, just water fast, seven day fast. And I told God back then, I said, God, I know that I have to have more of you. I want more of you. I've got to have more of you to do what you have called me to do. And I don't want anything in my heart. Come on, somebody that would hinder me from doing what you called me to do, God. So I went on this fast and in this fast, I, on the third day that I was in this fast, all of a sudden, I had, an uh, I don't want to spook anybody here, but I had, a, <laughs> I had a supernatural encounter with God to where there was such a supernatural, it was almost like an outer body experience. It was such a supernatural experience with God that in this, he took me to a place and gave me a vision. And in this vision, it was like I could see God. And, and, and I've seen his face. And in his face, it was like out of his eyes were these two red beams. And they were, go, they were just like going forth out. And they were going right into a heart of a man. <laughs> And they were looking into the heart of man. And God was telling me right then, he said, I'm searching the hearts of man. And I'm looking into their hearts. And so ladies and gentlemen, in order to worship God, to worship God in truth, we have to have a pure heart. We have to have a pure heart and we have to have truth. We have to be truthful with God. Tell God what we're dealing with. Hey God, I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with unforgiveness. I'm dealing with hurt. I'm deal dealing with bitterness. And God was looking into man and he told me in this vision, he said, I am looking for those that will worship me in truth and in spirit with a pure heart. And so in that moment, I, I began to ask God, I said, God, show me what is in my heart that would keep me from worshiping you in truth. Now, just hang on with me. Just hang on a minute. We're going to get into the meat of this message, but I have to share with you about being true with God because you have to be true with God in order to be a true worshiper. And in order for the glory to invade you, <laughs> you have to worship God in truth and in spirit. Amen. So we have to get ourselves right to, to where that we can enter into God, enter into his presence, enter into worship without there being anything in our life because that hinders the movement of God's glory. Even the priests, when they went into the temple, if they had sin in their life, woo, they had to tie them little bells, you know, uh, the rope around their leg. And if they had sin, they said, jerk me out because they didn't want to die because they knew the power of God. They knew what it meant to go into God's presence, into the glory of God. They understood uh, the, what would you say, how to reverence God, amen, and what would happen, and so this is where I'm wanting us to get today, because what God has spoke and showed about the release of a greater glory that is coming upon the earth, that the, and the greater glory is coming because God has to feel, fulfill his debt, uh, his prophecy, and the Bible talks about darkness and gross darkness coming upon the people. Well, all that is, is that is a setup for God's glory to be released here upon the earth. It is a setup for God's glory to be released. I got to say that again. It's a 
set up for God's glory to be released. So all I can say is you better embrace for impact for heaven's glory. You better embrace yourself for the impact of heaven's glory. Amen. And so how do we worship God? We must worship God in truth, but how do we worship him? We worship God by taking time to enter into his presence through prayer, through soaking in, in worship music and meditating through the word of God, through song. We enter into his presence, but how do we get there? We do that by honoring him. We do that by reverence in him. We do that by fearing the Lord. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 9 and 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And that is the problem today is there is not very many people that understand worship because they do not reverence God, they do not honor God, and they do not fear God. The fear of the Lord prolongs the days for the righteous, and it shortens, come on, the years of the wicked. Now, somebody ought to be shouting right there. It is fear and reverence and honoring God that is what worship is. And how do we reverence God, honor him? Like I said, we enter in, we take time for prayer. We take time for worship. We take time to give God honor and reverence. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't two months ago, I was in a conference and the Lord began to minister to us about the glory, about his glory and, and manifestation began to happen. And I never have experienced a move of the glory of God like that. I, I believe we even uh, posted one of the services. But anyway, it, it, and this is what I want to get to because people have to understand that when God's glory not just his glory, but the Shekinah glory shows up in a service out of reverence, out of honoring, out of worship. We were in worship and his Shekinah glory showed up. What do I mean by Shekinah glory? It is a manifested presence of God. In other words, it was God and his presence manifested. There's many ways that God's presence manifested. Woo! It manifests, if, if, if you can see it in the spiritual, manifest through a cloud. It will manifest through, um, <laughs> it will manifest through the rose of Sharon. If you've ever been in a service and you've ever smelled such a sweet, sweet rose, that is is the glory of God manifesting. See, a lot of people don't understand what the glory of God is. So when it comes, they don't they don't know how to reverence it. They don't know how to honor it because they don't know what God's glory is. And today I'm trying to, I'm not trying, I am teaching you about the glory of God and what uh, some of the manifestations of his glory is so that you will honor him and you will reverence him. Amen. And so in that, uh, the, in this service, the glory of God began to manifest and his presence, the glory was so thick that, that people, they, we just, the worship was just so unreal that people were just sitting there in awe. Some people didn't know how to respond. Some people, uh, they were weeping under the presence of God. Some of them were um, getting healed and not even being touched. Some of them, uh, the glory of God Woo, is such an impact on people's lives that that, uh, that sickness has to leave, oppression has to leave, change happens. I mean, it's such the it is such an all of God. The glory of God is who he is in all that he is. It is his splendor. It is, it is his authority. It is his power. It is his wisdom. It is his goodness. It is his mercy. The glory of God is his manifested presence. Amen. 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 So 
I want to get over to this scripture and read this scripture to you because I told you that how on earth is <laughs> the glory of God going to get here on the earth? The glory of God. How is the glory of God going to be manifested here on earth? And it is through worship. Amen. It is through worship. So let's read Isaiah 6. Start with verse 1. And in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Mm. Above it stood seraphims, which are angels. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet, and with two, he flew. And one cried to another, saying, Holy, 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 holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Woo! And listen to this. And the post of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out and the house was filled with smoke. Now look, this is what's going on here. This is what's happening. Woo. They are <laughs> they are in a setting. They are in the heavens. There God is sitting on his throne in the heavens and you have the the angels of God in there. And you have an not just one but angels and they are crying ho to each other. They're going holy holy is the Lord. Holy holy is the Lord of hosts and the whole earth is filled with his glory. So I I believe that what's going on is they're having a conversation back and forth and those angels all they can say from one angel to the other this angel's on holy 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 is the lord of hosts and his glory fill the whole earth then you have the angel turns over and says oh yeah well holy 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 is the lord of hosts his glory fills the whole earth and they're just back and forth going holy 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 is the lord god and his glory fill the earth what am I saying here? These angels of God, they were reverencing God. They knew God. There he was. And they were honoring him. They knew who he was. They reverenced him. They feared him. They knew that if they did not cry out who he was and, and with a voice, they understood. Well, they understood who they were among. They understood that God was setting right there and that they were in the presence of a holy God and they cried out holy 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 they were worshiping him that was a form of worship that was a form of reverence that was a form of honor and they were worshiping him and they were decreeing and declaring that the glory of the Lord fill the whole earth Woo! Mm. I can just, I can just see it. I can just see it how that they are going back and forth. Holy, 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 holy. And they were worshiping and honoring God. And their worship was so intense. It was so powerful, so focused so uh, authoritative in who God was and is and his glory with their voice, with their voice, it caused the post to shake. Is your worship that powerful today? Ha <laughs> ha! Is your worship that powerful today? You may say, well, I'm not an angel. No, you're not. But you are the child of the living God. 
You are the child of the king of kings. You are, he is inside of you. You carry his presence. You're, you're more than an angel. You ha and don't get me wrong. We need teaching on angels because angels are, are, are part of God and they operate with you and his word. But what is your worship today? What, is, what are you saying with your worship? How powerful is your worship today? Is it powerful enough to cause something to shake and to move? Mm. Is it that powerful? <laughs> I just want to tell you today that when you begin to worship God with such a reverence, with such an honor, with such an authority, with such a heart of purity, not only will you see the glory of God, but you will begin to experience a glory of God in such a way that you will not be able to explain it. That's what happened to us in one of these meetings when the glory of God fell. It was so powerful and, and, and that, that some people didn't know what to do. They didn't, it, they didn't know how to express themselves. They didn't know how to enter in. They didn't, it was unexplainable. And, and I even went over to the minister and I was just bawling because God said to me, he said, they do not realize and recognize that my glory has manifested that I am here, that God himself was there in that meeting. And I was weeping like a baby. Some were down on the floor crying. Some were just sitting, some were talking. And I walked over and I said, they do not. And before I could finish that, that minister was crying and said, they do not recognize and realize and discern the presence of God's glory. And I said, no, they don't. They didn't understand it because it, the God's glory will invade your life in ways that are unexplainable. <laughs> And until you experience God on that level, it's hard for you, even if you do, it's hard for you to be able to um, deliver that to a people for them to understand in such a way. Because one, you can't explain God. <laughs> you can't explain his actions. You can't explain his presence. It's unexplainable. But... I'm here to tell you that the key to get you into a place of God's glory and to get God's glory here on earth is worship. See, we as God's people, we have to press in for worship because God is seeking those that right now that will worship him in truth and in spirit. And by doing that, it's gonna cause us to birth the glory of God here on the earth. And there must be a birthing of God's glory to where it is released upon the earth to see lives touched and changed, amen. And so we must... Uh, we must hear what God is saying. And there's a new sound, a new sound from heaven being released out of heaven that will birth the glory of God. And it is the sound of worship that is coming out of the heavens. And it is a sound of your worshiping, combining together, coming together. Come on, somebody, as a, as a, as a husband and wife, come together. So is the worship in heaven and are worshiping, coming together here in the spirit realm that's going to cause conception of a release of God's glory woo, and a latter glory. 
the power of the new sound will birth God's glory. Come on, did you hear that? The power, the sound of the power uh, will birth God's glory. You will begin to hear more and more about God's glory. And suddenly uh, you will begin woo, to feel the release of God's glory for the earth. Woo, my Lord, the winds. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm hearing that, God. I'm hearing that. I'm hearing that. Uh, yeah, suddenly God is, uh, God says, I will begin to blow upon the earth uh, the winds of glory, for I am releasing winds uh, of glory that will produce waves of glory, that will produce the sound of the enemy uh, being blown away, uh, and the sound of the nations rising to honor me, says the Lord. Uh, it's a glory revival, uh, a glory outpouring of my Shekinah glory upon all flesh. It's a global invasion of my glory. Did I not say that I will cover the whole earth with his glory? With my glory? There's been revivals of laughter and rain, but now the next revival will be known as the winds of my glory outpouring up. And it will shake heaven and earth. It will be the glory shaking that will awake for it will awaken the earth, says the Lord. Glory that is powerful, glory that is unshakable, glory that is un, un, where you don't understand it. My glory transforms, says the Lord. Woo! It rescues, says the Lord. It renews and refreshes, says the Lord. There's a fresh wind. There are portals of glory that we are setting under right now. We are set, woo, woo, I just see portals. I see portals opening up. Heaven's portals are opening up and I see glory. I see glory. I see glory encounters and worship is the key to manifestation of God's glory. Woo, come on somebody. Woo, Shanda Ikiridia. We thank you for that word, God. We thank you for that word. We thank you for that word. I'm fixing to bring this to a close real quick here. Gonna bring this to a close. When you begin to worship the Lord, it causes the king of glory to enter. It causes an entrance for him. It makes an entrance for God, for the king of glory. It causes an entrance. So, mm. And when that happens, baby, <laughs> the king of glory in all his splendor will cause things to shake, rattle, and roll. When the king of glory makes an entrance, everybody's going to know about it. I said, everybody's going to know about it. It's a global shakening. Uh, Psalms, in Psalms, I believe it is Psalms, Psalms. Let me tell you where it is. Psalms 24, you can go and read it. Psalms 24, 7 and 10. It talks about when the king of glory enters in. Who is the king of glory? Our king, the king, Yahweh, Yahshua, Jehovah Jireh, Nisi. He is the king of glory. And so when we worship, it causes an entryway for God's glory, for his presence to show up. And it's a global glory shakening. Finishing up with this right here. His glory produces, it demonstrates, and it transforms. It will transform the dead, the living, the poor, the sick, the bound, the addicted, the oppressed, the hurting, the rich, the believer, the non-believer, and it's going to shake their world. It will shake your world. It will shake my world. It will shake their world. It will shake the world. So embrace yourself for the impact of a global glory shakening of God. The waves of glory revival are being released upon the earth, even now through your worship. So what's the key? What is the key to this word today? Worship. God told me, he said, there's a glory that's hitting the earth that is going to shake 
the earth and it's going to be birthed through worship. It was the worship that took place in heaven that caused something to move. It is your worship combining with worship from heaven that is releasing God's glory here on earth. So press, keep pressing, keep pushing, keep worshiping. Go deeper in worship today with God and watch something move in your life. Watch breakthrough take place in your family and in the earth. Amen. God bless you. I love y'all so much. Thank you, Dr. Faye, for having me on here today and all those that are watching. It is such an honor to share what God has laid on my heart. I love you, lady. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, and I am convinced as soon as I read Prophetess Christie's uh, subject on what she was going to be sharing, that thing just exploded in me. I'm convinced this is not just something that we're just going to have a, a big hoopla about. Like she said, it's going to cause transformation. It's going to yeah. cause change, irreversible yeah. change. I want you to hear yeah. that. Because we've, we've had some some touches before yeah. and we've had some sessions yeah. and we've had some high times before and we went right back to the same old, same old. Yes. Not this time. No. Not this time. I'm convinced that this glory shaking is going to be like she already said, the prelude, yes. the rolling out of the red carpet for the bridegroom king to come back. Yes. For his queen. But yes. she will position herself and prepared herself through worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Listen, Ooh, yeah. you don't want to you don't you don't want to miss this glory. You don't want to miss coming into alignment. You don't want to miss when he returns, you are ready. You don't want to be like the five virgins. That's right. Who didn't have the oil, mm -hmm. who didn't have the glory, who didn't have the worship, who didn't have the right reverence. She already said it's, it's a new sound a new sound of worship on a whole nother level. And it's a level, I love, I love it when she said it, it's a level that's in accordance with heaven's worship. Yes. It's not something we conjuring up and manufacturing. Now I'm going to say that on purpose. It's not something we conjuring up or manufacturing. Yeah. It's going to come from heaven and it will be mm -hmm. in accordance with heaven. In other words, yes. the two coming together, yes. causing an experience explosion yes. whereby the whole earth is filled with the glory. Now watch this because the promise was not only to shake the earth, it was to shake the heavens too. Yes. So imagine Woo. how antsy heaven Woo. is waiting on this shaking. It belongs to heaven as well as us. So listen, receive this word, share this on your page, prepare your heart. She began with that, mm -hmm. preparing her heart saying, God, I don't want anything to That's be right. in the world. That's right. Anything that I have allowed, anything I have had excuses, anything I have defended and justified, I don't want it in the way. And she went on a fast. Fast wasn't to move God. Fast was to move her into alignment <laughs> with God. Come on here now. <laughs> Listen, she's already preached, but I'm, I'm just, something's happening. Something is happening. And I pray that you have ears yes. to hear what the spirit is saying. I pray that you come into alignment. I pray that you will awaken in this hour like never before because the alarm is sounding. Yes, the alarm is. is sounding. Don't turn over and hit the snooze button and turn your back on the clock. Get up. Get up. Amen. It's high time that we get up Amen. and come yes. into align alignment with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Listen, thank you, prophetess. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you getting before him. Thank you for hearing what the spirit is saying to the church. Did you hear that? What the spirit is saying to the church. But watch this because the spirit is not only speaking to the church. He's speaking to the world at large. He's speaking yes. to the world globally. He said, I will yes. pour out my spirit on all flesh, not just all. the church flesh, yes. all flesh. He's so yeah. generous. He's not willing mm. that any should perish. That's, That's the kind right. of God we're talking about. Yes. He wants us to come in that one, oneness and that alignment with him. Amen. Wow. Wow. wow, wow. I, I know you God can see good. the presence of God. We invite you to share this on your page. Share it. Share it across the board. Go back and listen to it again. 
it might just be a bite a, a bite of something that she said and the spirit says stop right there and you yeah. just stop right there and just allow the spirit to speak and give you revelation yes. she hit the nail on the head we can't explain god he has to be revealed but he yes. has to be revealed by himself the holy yes. ghost so come Ooh, on yes come on come on come yeah on. yeah yeah the lord was always given a church yeah. given the church in revelation given the church a window of repentance, yes. a window to come yes. into alignment. We yes. are receiving a window to yes. come into alignment. We mm. are receiving a window to come into alignment before it is everlasting too late. So come on, come on, yes. come on, come on, Woo. come on, Jeez. come on, come on, come on. Don't have an excuse. Don't talk about an addiction. Don't talk about this runs in my family. Don't forget all of that. That's a distraction. Yes. She talked about yes. that. Yes. Forget yes. all the distraction. Forget all the strange voices. Hear him and just say yes and amen. Yes. Hear him and just say yes and amen. And press, yes. press, yes. press to come into alignment mm -hmm. with him. Amen. Wow. How do press? By believing him, pressing into worship, pressing into worship. Pressing into worship. What does that mean? What is worship? Worship is to give worth and value and esteem to something above all else. Yes. Pressing to worship. So that praise will continually begin to be in your mouth. Not mm -hmm. an argument, not a debate, not strife, <laughs> not complaining, not mm -hmm. backbiting, not putting somebody down, not being negative. I'm telling you, this worship, this worship in spirit and in truth yeah. will begin to purify us and bring us yes. into holy alignment. Yes. with our king again I, you, you got me i'm telling you when when i read that, <laughs> that, that thing blew up thank you prophetess christy you're welcome wow thank you i want to say thank god you. bless you amen again, share this on your page amen. and until next time yes whew, thank you. go ahead hmm. and come into alignment be coming into alignment and don't That's let right. anybody uh talk you out despise not that they have small beginnings in other words don't compare your worship with mine that's don't say, right. well, I'm not worshiping because I don't worship like her. Forget that. You right. worship like right. you worship. That's right. You worship like the spirit is leading you. Yes. You might not worship 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 minutes or, or an hour or, or, or yes. you worship right yes. where he has you. Let him direct your worship. Again, we said worship yes. in spirit and yes. in truth. So let the Holy yes. Ghost yes. deal with you like he wants to deal with you. Yes. And as you agree and give yourself to him and his leading and his lordship, your mm. worship will grow. It will increase and mm. it will, yes, not only shake the posts, <laughs> it will affect one another. She said, brace That's yourself, right. honey. Brace That's yourself. Right. It's all That's us. right. It's you all better us. embrace yourself. Amen. <laughs> Begin somewhere and then just begin. If it's five minutes, just begin. <laughs> just begin some worship and embrace yourself because when, when you when you worship God, you better embrace yourself because what you're doing is you're making room for him to show up. And when he shows up, he says an all-consuming fire and he'll consume you. Woo! <laughs> embrace it. <laughs> amen, amen. And be mindful too. They were worshiping, they were worshiping, and they were saying one to another. Yeah. One to another. Yeah. And it's not just rhetoric, y'all. Anyway, right. we're gone. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, God bless you. <laughs>